Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up, too, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> you know, one of the problems with great fighters is that they make it look too easy. Right? We watch fights, at least I watch fights, especially when I was younger. <clears throat> and I would wonder why everybody couldn't be a combination puncher like Sugar Ray Leonard. Right? It just seemed like Leonard could show up, throw combinations, overwhelm opponents, impress judges, throw more punches than an opponent could block, right? And then would win a fight, sometimes on really hand speed alone. He made it look easy, right? I remember one time I saw a Ray Leonard fight. The great Howard Cosell was interviewing him after a fight. And Cosell, who back then was as big as the sport of boxing, if not bigger, actually had the gravitas to on film criticize Ray Leonard for taking an easy fight and for overwhelming his opponent. And Leonard, who looked like he had barely had a workout, just sat there and smiled and, you know, told Howard that, you know, he just fought the opponents in front of him, right? Ray Leonard made it look easy. But let's talk about combination punching because that's actually much harder than any of us want to realize. You have one of boxing's rare combination punchers in Andres Fonfara, right? This guy throws punches in bunches. It's a two-handed attack, right? Understand, if you're a combination puncher, if you're throwing punches and you're up on a guy, that's very different than, let's say, someone like Vladimir Klitschko, who's hitting you with a jab to set up a specific punch, right? Combination punchers are the type where they're much less cautious than Vladimir Klitschko, right? Even if they hit you with the punch they want, let's say a left hook, they'll then step forward. They'll then be right up on you so they can hit you with the other hand, and then throw five, six, seven, eight punches after that, right? You know the combination punchers, Joe Calzaghe, right? Um, Sugar Ray Leonard, Muhammad Ali, right? These are guys who literally have highlights where they're emptying the medicine cabinet on you, right? The guy's just throwing all these punches, <laughs> And it's dangerous because to open up the medicine cabinet, to come inside and just start throwing a bunch of punches means that you've had to decide to literally step forward and be in the other guy's grill. Now understand, as Joe Calzaghe found out when he fought Bernard Hopkins, in fact, as Joe Calzaghe found out early when he fought Roy Jones, when you're coming inside to throw both punches, savvy veterans will lay in wait. They'll have a punch prepared. So when you step inside, and keep in mind, since you're going to throw both hands, you don't have a hand up, right? You've hit the guy, you've committed, then you step inside and you're about to unload with both hands. A guy like a Bernard Hopkins will come in with a nice short punch, right? You remember Roy Jones threw a nice short punch. Granted, it wasn't really a punch. It was more of an arm if you look at the replay. But these guys knew that Joe Calzaghe was going to try to open up, and they were prepared for him, right? Let me also say, too, let's talk about a guy like Ali. It's interesting because if you're a combination puncher, 
you have to find a way to find the other guy. Right? The other guy has to be there to get hit with the combination. Now, interestingly enough, with Ali, who, particularly when he was younger, seemed to have a decided foot speed and balance advantage on almost all of his opponents, right? Ali would actually have his victim find him, right? He'd be on his back foot operating behind a jab and opponents somehow would get lured into trying to find him and they would walk into the combination. Think about that one, right? Where, you know, countless Ali opponents literally walked into punches. You remember the Sonny Liston phantom punch in that rematch, right? Well, Ali was interesting because he would find a way to have you follow him around the ring. And the first mistake a lot of opponents made was they would do just that. Then Ali, while he was moving, would convert a jab into a combination and the opponent was finished, right? Well, Fanfar is interesting to me because he, in my opinion, needs the opponent to be right in front of him in order to empty the medicine cabinet. Right? He's a combination puncher. He throws punches in bunches. But he needs for you to be Glenn Johnson right in front of him. Tommy Carpensi in the first round of their fight right in front of him for him to unload. Right, So as you're watching a Ray Leonard with great foot speed find opponents, devastate them. If you're watching an Ali Great foot speed. Have opponents find him. Devastate them with combination punches. Right? Keep in mind that they've already figured out a way to get the guy within range of their combinations. I don't believe Andres Fonfara has. This is a high-risk play. He's facing a guy who just got knocked out in devastating fashion. Gabriel Campillo. In fact, if you look through Campillo's record, you'll see he got knocked out before the Sergei Kovalev fight. His chin is a question mark, even perhaps his best moment. The Tavoris Cloud fight, that if, in my opinion, the judges scored that fight correctly, he would have won by several rounds, even in that fight. Gabriel Campillo got dropped. But Campillo moves. Right? Campillo is a southpaw with movement. And I believe that for Funfara to be effective and to start throwing his combinations, he's going to have to find a way to get Gabriel Campillo to stop moving. And even in Fanfara's hometown of Chicago, I think that's asking too much. I like Gabriel Campillo in this fight. Just understand, you need to tread lightly here. The ice is thin. But understand that Campillo has fought more explosive punchers than Andres Fanfara. In fact, more explosive fighters. He's fought... Light heavyweight champion Babu Chumanov. Quite frankly, he beat Chumanov, but didn't get the decision. Right? He's fought Tavares Cloud. He's fought Sergei Kovalev. I know Kovalev killed him. But understand, in my opinion, he beat Tavares Cloud. Now he's fighting an up and comer in Andres Fonfara. I believe the secret to this fight can be found in the film of Fonfara's fight against Tommy Carpensi. For those of you looking for the film, I have a link on my YouTube channel page here. You're going to see that after Carpensi gets dropped twice in the first round, he gets up and changes his strategy. He starts moving. Let me tell you, in my opinion, Carpensi, who starts behind 10-7, right? He's been knocked down twice in the first round. In my opinion, Carpensi starts dominating the fight. 
He starts moving around Fanfara, who even though Fanfara has hand speed, and even though Fanfara throws combinations and is committed to jumping in and throwing a lot of punches, Fanfara was neutralized because he needed Carpensi to stay still while Fanfara then unloaded. The fact that Carpensi keeps moving around the ring and fainting left Fanfara in neutral. I believe Gabriel Campillo is even better at moving than Tommy Carpensi. I think Campillo throws a great jab and has a lot of feints. I can see Gabriel Campillo going to Chicago and beating Andres Fanfara. Let me point out, <clears throat> the fight's a few weeks away. I have not been able to look up a boxing line on this fight. I can't find one. I've been to Odds Checker. Right? But understand, sometimes I try to just scrutinize a fight, regardless of the line, figure out who's going to win, and then go from there. Here, I believe it's a very safe bet to say that Fanfara is going to be the favorite in this fight, right? The fight's in Fanfara's backyard. He has galvanized the public's attention in the city of Chicago, one of the biggest cities here in the United States. Also, Campillo is coming off of a devastating early KO by Sergei Kovalov. So, my operating assumption in making this video especially since the fight's in Chicago, Fanfara's backyard, is that Campillo is going to be a meaningful underdog, better than a plus 140. If those are the odds, I like Campillo to win the fight, but I'll hedge it with Fanfara by KO. But understand the risk involved, and it's substantial. Campillo isn't a knockout puncher. He has been robbed in multiple decisions in the past. The Shumanov fight in Las Vegas. The Tavares Cloud fight in the United States. Right? Campillo here is fighting a crowd-friendly fighter in that fighter's backyard. So in my opinion, he's going to have to win more than a simple majority of the rounds. In other words, he's going to have to limit Funfara to winning no more than four rounds. I think he can do it. Understand Campillo used to hold the belt at light heavyweight. He's a world-class fighter. But you need to just understand that he's up against the guy who, when he stops moving, he's going to find that Funfara is a very high-volume guy, you know, who will step forward. I like Campillo to win hedged with Funfara by KO, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.